I know what you're all thinking, a video this soon in the day? Well, to be honest, I wouldn't be doing this video if I didn't think this was important enough to get it out to you at our, our normal, usual time. So think of this as a, as a bonus video today. Um... <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I generally don't know how to start this video, but we'd been saying for the past couple of weeks, I'd, I'd been warning people about this, that um, Brexiteer MPs, especially what we, what we shall we dub them as the, the Brexit Ultra MPs, uh, people like the ERG, David Davis, and, and so on, had been saying that we had to... Um, just get rid of the withdrawal agreement because, yeah, you know, ignoring an international treaty that we've signed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great going, guys. Great going. But this gets even more ridiculous because apparently um, we're going to go into the article in a bit. But I can't remember if it mentioned this or not, mentions this or not. So forgive me. But something that went unreported over the weekend is that Boris Johnson has made the demands to the EU because this is how you conduct negotiations. You, you make a demand. This is, you know, this is like, you know, imagine a hostage situation and there's the the UK in the building and then there's the EU out here as like the police. And they're going, what are your demands? The UK just shouts out, we don't know yet. <laughs> That's, but this is insane. But you, this, yeah, because you know you make demands in a negotiation stage because yeah, this is how incompetent our government really is, and it's just all show and theatrics. But this show and theatrics is going to have real world consequences on this country. You know, <laughs> real world consequences, and it's going to be an absolute disaster. So apparently Johnson has made the demand that he wants to double the UK's fishing quota. Why on earth does the UK just get to demand or ask for... This is what I've, we've been saying all along about how the UK has been acting as if the, the EU owes the UK some sort of special privileged access. It doesn't owe the UK a damn thing. And this is what we've got to try and slam in to Brexit supporters that you've been completely misled all this time over the EU, what it does and its functions and how important it is to the UK. And this isn't something to celebrate, by the way. This is just ridiculous. But there you go. So we go straight to The Guardian. And, of course, this is literally breaking headlines about eight o'clock this morning and i've been trying to follow this as much as possible um but you know i think it um the guardian live uh, has been has got one of their live feeds trying to follow this because i think this might be a continuing story throughout the day so this might not be the only bonus video you get today we'll have to see how this develops um however brexit boris johnson to override eu withdrawal agreement because overriding an international treaty is a wonderful way to start things. So, Boris Johnson is drawing up legislation that will override the Brexit withdrawal agreement on Northern Ireland, a move that threatens to collapse um, a, the crunch talks which the Prime Minister has said must be completed within five weeks. Yeah, words, words, generally, I I have no words. They're all idiots. They really are. <laughs> Johnson will put an ultimatum to negotiators this week, saying the UK and Europe must agree on a post-Brexit deal by the 15th of October, or Britain will walk away for good. The EU, by the way, has, has been long preparing for a no-deal outcome. They've suspected this for over well over quite some time. Um, because as we've covered last week, um, from the EU negotiators' perspective, they are not arguing with someone 
who is arguing, who is trying to negotiate in good faith from a pragmatic um, standpoint. They are arguing and negotiating by their own words with people who are ideologues. And I've, I've said it before, you can't negotiate with someone who is an ideologue. So, to be honest, at the start of this year, where I put forward, uh, uh, no, it was, we went through a, 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 um, an article, and it basically said that it's going to be a no deal. All these uh, negotiations are just a big song and dance to make it look like they can blame it on the EU. In this case, we cannot blame the EU. It has been the UK that has proved to be completely intransigent by wanting to demand special privileged access to the European market, to the single market, without having to take any responsibilities or anything like that. And that is just a complete no. The EU has been very clear from day one, you cannot have that. You cannot allow that. If you want access to the single market, then you have to play by the rules like everyone else. You either have access or you don't. There is no in-between. Anyway, we continue. But progress on the already fragile talks will be threatened by plans revealed on Sunday for the UK government to publish a controversial section uh, of the Internal Market Bill on Wednesday that will intentionally try to unpick parts of the withdrawal agreement signed in January. This will include elements of the special arrangements for Northern Ireland that are legally binding. I want to say that. They are trying to unpick parts of a withdrawal agreement that is legally binding. Uh, I generally don't know what to say at this point. I really don't. Except... Everything that we've been saying for the, over the past four years has, has has come on unfortunately true. We are we are going to end up with the hardest possible Brexit because Boris Johnson and the the Brexiteers are willing to drive this country over a cliff edge because they basically want to get rid of regulations that affect this country and they can't do them while they're in the EU. And some are doing this on a willful purpose because, as we've discussed before, lots of these people, these Brexiteers, have purposefully shorted the pound. That meaning that they are betting on the pound to fail. So all this talk about having confidence in the UK and being optimistic is just complete baloney. But there you go. Anyway, it continues. A UK government source told The Guardian the plan was part of the preparation for a no-deal exit that would present a number of new barriers to trade from Northern Ireland, and accepted that this move was likely to blow up at the negotiations this week. Labour said that the Prime Minister was threatening uh, to, re to renege on the UK's legal obligations, <coughs> and called it an act of immense bad faith. One that would be viewed dimly by future trading partners and allies around the world. And that sums it up perfectly. We are reneging on a deal. And apparently we want to go around the world and do these, quote, incredible deals. What country is going to want to do deals with us when we have shown that if it's not to our liking in some way, shape or form... We'll just renege on it. Regardless, even if it is legally binding international treaty. The news was condemned by Ireland's foreign, uh, foreign affairs minister, Simon Coveley, who helped broker the original Brexit settlement, saying that any change would be very unwise. The move, first reported by the Financial Times, would... Roll, would roll back parts of the UK's agreement with the EU on state aid and customs arrangements for Northern Ireland. It is understood that the UK government believes that the original protocol is drafted ambiguously enough 
to allow for a change of interpretation, a view that is likely to be fiercely contested by Brussels. A government spokesperson said that it was hopeful that a deal would still be reached. A responsible government, as, quote, as a responsible government. <laughs> oh, that was, that was funny. Oh. Uh, we are a we are considering fallback fallback options in the event that this is not achieved to ensure that the communities of Northern Ireland are protected. Key figures close to negotiations have already warned that EU leaders and heads of state must intervene before the end of the month to stave talks from collapse. On Monday, the Prime Minister will set a firm deadline of the fifteenth October, the date of the European Council, for the deal to be signed. The mood, uh, the, the mood is bleak as formal talks resume this week and the UK's lead negotiator, David Frost, and the EU's Michel Barnier. If no agreement is reached before the deadline, the UK will, quote, move on and accept the deal cannot be struck. Johnson will say that according uh, to that, no deal would be, quote, a good outcome. We already know how bad a no deal is. From the government's own impact assessments. What, how on earth is a no deal a good outcome? Boris Johnson stood on the fact that he had a oven ready Brexit deal. Are you serious? I, I really do hope that there is a rebellion on this. I generally seriously do hope. Because there were conservative MPs that stood for this deal. I generally do hope that there is an open rebellion against Boris on this. But I doubt it, to be honest. The Prime Minister uh, will strike a belligerent tone, suggesting that there will be no movement from the deadline and claiming that the UK is ready to trade on World Trade Organization terms from January, which it is absolutely not. Businesses have no clue throughout all this businesses are not prepared they are not had no guidance no idea what the changes are going to be because the government has not told them officially officially they are like um from the 15th of october they're probably going to have like two months to try and prepare massive changes to their to their things for here's here's a good example if you're a logistics firm that operates both in the UK and the EU. This now means that your, your drivers can no longer just have their UK driver's license. They will have to actually go out and get um, European driver's licenses as well, which involves them taking a test and sitting an exam. That's what they have to do. That infrastructure to do those exams does not exist. Not only will they have to have those in place but they will also have to have separate insurance for them to drive that is going to be an enormous cost to logistics firms and that's just one of the myriad of problems companies are about to face he said there is no sense in thinking about timelines that go beyond that point he will say if we can't agree by then, then I do not see that there will be a free trade agreement between us, and we should both accept that and move on. Johnson and his allies have repeatedly said that they did not believe early negotiations that made the threat of a no deal tangible enough. EU, EU officials have previously said that the deadline would uh, the deadline would be the end of October. Sources close to the talks have suggested that fresh faces and interventions by member states are now needed to break the impasse after days of recriminations. This is just completely ridiculous. They are trying to buy you into the myth that the EU does deals at the last minute. So Boris Johnson is buying into this myth and trying to force the, uh, the EU to do a deal at the last minute. The EU is not going to do that. And by the way, if we do ignore this withdrawal agreement and these negotiations end, 
we are going to have to do with a deal with Europe eventually. They are our biggest trading partner. That does not change once we are out of the EU. This is the continuous argument that has never changed. It doesn't matter that we go and get a trade deal with um, America or Australia or New Zealand. They add nothing to our GDP. Our closest trading partners are the European Union. That does not change. So we need a deal regardless. This is going to cause huge, huge problems. That means UK businesses are not going to be competitive in Europe, which means job losses here. UK, EU businesses that have production plants here are probably going to up sticks and move back to Europe. That means more job losses here. Prices are going to increase. That will mean job losses here. You know, we, we've covered this numerous times. Numerous times. But here we are. And here's the thing. The idea that um, international heads should get involved. They're all pretty much united on this fact. They they haven't disagreed with Michel Barnier at all. You know, nothing... No EU leader is going to intervene and say that we need a deal with the UK because they've all been pretty much behind and the integrity of the single market. You know, <laughs> all things going to change. So anyway, it continues. Raoul Rupal, one of the leading advisors in Theresa May's Brexit negotiating team, suggested that the dynamics needed to change. It's just Frost and Barnier and the same teams... <coughs> In talks, you've got two immovable objects sitting down again and again, and are not going to see great movement coming from that, he said. There needs to be some change, some sort of fresh input, some political input. If we come to an if we come to the end of the year and we don't have a deal between two close allies, that would look ridiculous. But with the two sides entrenched, where the me mechanisms for unlocking the talks is not obvious. Johnson will characterize the result of a no deal as a trading as a trading agreement with the EU like Australia's saying that the UK would have full control of its laws and fishing waters and would quote prosper mightily as a result. Um yeah we <laughs> I, I refer you to the government's own impact assessments on what would happen in the event of a no deal. He will say that the UK will, quote, find a sensible accommodations on practical issues such as flights, lorry transports or scientific cooperation if the EU wants to do that. And this is this is something that we've come to points over. Part of the, the, the EU withdrawal agreement was saying that before we can move on to stuff like that, uh, you have to agree these things first. Because we're not going to do this by piecemeal. We're going to do this properly by the book. Like we do with everyone else. So the UK, despite the Brexiteer claims, is not being treated differently. It's not being punished. This is how they treat the rest of the world. This is why the EU is so good at making deals. Because it does stuff by the books. It also has a lot of power. And we are about to find how little power we have on the world stage soon. So, uh, industry leaders have previously said that no deal would spell disaster for the country. With tariffs imposed on goods, sending costs for, in, for, for industry and consumers soaring. Last week, an LES uh, London School of Economics professor, Thomas Simpson, said that no deal could cost more than the economic cost of COVID, causing a 3.3 trillion decline in the value of the UK's outputs. Johnson will say that negotiation that the negotiators will continue to work hard to close a deal, even at this late stage. If the EU are ready to rethink their current positions and agree to this, I will be delighted. The EU ain't reconsidering their positions. They've been very clear even before the referendum that, quote, you cannot have your cake and eat it. And this is what Boris Johnson wants. The UK is arguing specifically to have privileged access and none of the responsibilities. We have covered this time 
and time and time again. But we cannot and will not compromise on the fundamentals of what it means to be an independent country uh, to get it. Again, this is a complete misunderstanding of how modern economics, modern trade deals work. Countries give up sovereignty all the time in trade deals. And we were part of the most successful trading bloc in the world. Where we were all sharing and pooling our sovereignty. But because the UK wants to be treated like some, you know, something special. It demands, it wants special treatment. And no, this is not, this is, it does not get special treatment because it's decided to leave the club. I'll come back to this analogy continuously. Imagine you're a gym and you're a gym member and you pay a monthly subscription and you suddenly leave the gym. You do not get to go back to the gym and demand that special access and that special privileges that you had as a member. Even if you keep on using it every day like you used to, you'll now have to pay a daily fee. You have to pay for glasses, classes. You probably have to pay a bit extra for a towel, whatever. You have to pay the costs. This is, and you can hear that. You can hear. You can literally hear the the speech. This is an ideologue talking. This isn't someone who's trying to negotiate pragmatically. And the whole point of this 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 fifteenth of October deadline is because the Brexiteers have always said, "Oh, the EU is the master of the last minute deal." So this is Boris Johnson falling for that and drinking that Kool Aid. The EU is not the master of the last minute deal. It does these through a series of long negotiations and then the deal gets done at the end. This has been characterised um, very poorly by these Brexiteers as if the EU just deals at the last minute. It doesn't. It does deals through constant, concise negotiations. And this is just shows the power disparity here. 28, well, tw sorry, 27 countries, shall we say, Pulling them together to create a big economic block versus one country that is thinking that it's bigger bigger than it actually is, that it has more power than it thinks it does, and is demanding special privileged access. What did you think was going to happen in these negotiations? So anyway, it continues. There are worries that the European leaders are preoccupied with the COVID-19 recovery plan and foreign policy crisis in, in, uh, in Belarus and the, Eastern, uh, and the Eastern Mediterranean and appear to have no appetite at all to intervene in Brexit for now. And they've never had, by the way, because they've pretty much left it to Michel Barnier. That's been their, that's the EU's modus operandi from, from day one. Uh, there remain three stumbling blocks. First, uh, state aid, fisheries and governance. The EU has protested that the UK is refusing to put forward proposals, while the UK is accusing Barnier of trying to force it to cut a deal on the difficult areas first and failing to engage on easier challenges such as fishing rights. And this is, this is the point. The EU has actually been putting forward proposals that it thinks that the UK would like. The problem is, is that as we said, the UK wants to be treated like a special uh, case. So, how can you negotiate with someone that is not putting forward proposals, but instead making demands? That's not how you negotiate. And again, this sets a wonderful precedent, by the way, for us making our own trade deals around the world. While some... Um, National capitals favour a tougher negotiating stance than the one being pursued by Barnier. Said it right here first. There are some that want to treat us even harder than we're being treated now. So, so get that through your mind, Briggs supporters, what was just said there. They appear con uh, content to leave talks in his hand, fueling fields fueling fears that there will be no deal if back channels are not created to test new ideas in confidence. 
One UK government source said that member states' en engagement has been mim minimal, but more direct approaches with EU leaders could be imminent. Our broad view has been that uh, that we will come uh, that what will come in the next few weeks the source said the nature of these negotiations is that big players will start to get involved when we reach the final stages basically they think that germany or france is going to get involved probably not going to happen germany germany and france have, have been very content to leave it to barnier the Foreign Secretary Dominic Rabb said uh, on Sunday that the Brexit negotiations were approaching a moment of reckoning and that a deal was there for the taking. Okay, so why doesn't the UK agree to the EU's demands? If it wants access to the single market, then it has to accept those responsibilities. UK officials are keen to start technical work on the bulk of the trade agreement on goods and services for example on service schedules if we can't start talking about uh, legal text uh, uh, about talking about legal text this week then it is going to be difficult to get all the work done in the time available a uk source said a last minute political intervention would be high risk say eu sources ursula von der Leyen isn't interested in brexit as jean claude juncker was a source said that referring to the European Commission's president and her predecessor, you get the impression uh, you get the impression she just wants to move on uh, and move on and uh, uh, oh, 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 there we go. you get the impression she, that she just wants to move on and the, uh, and the same for all the member states. The fears uh, the fears that talks were on the verge of collapse were highlighted in the last 24 hours after Frost said the government was not scared of walking away. His remarks in the mail on Sunday led to recriminations with former May's Chief of Secretary Gavin Bakewell saying that Frost Frost had a brass neck. And we'll probably cover that maybe next week, this week, who knows. But yeah, um, talks are, are essentially going to explode because it is the UK that is at fault here. It's not the EU, despite how much Brexiteers and Brexit supporters would love to blame the EU for what's going on here. If you look at the talks and you... You just take a non-political view of, 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 what, of what's going on here. And you don't try and take sides. The EU is doing everything it can to try and get a deal. The problem is the UK um, isn't. It wants uh, privileged access without taking any of the responsibilities. And the EU, I said this again, the EU has been clear from day one. You cannot have access to the single market and not accept any of the responsibilities that go with it of being in the single market. That has been made very clear from day one. And once again, we are in this mess because Brexiteers do not understand the EU. They do not understand the customs union. They do not understand the single market. They do not understand how important it is for us to be in those institutions and how it has benefited the UK. And we are about to find out how much the, how much all that was important to the UK. Because as I have made it very clear, Brexit dies on the 1st of January. The All this thing of how, oh, it's going to be wonderful. We found that out immediately. Immediately how bad it is to be outside these institutions on the 1st of January. And oh boy, get ready for it. Because it is going to be fun. I'm predicting it next year. It's going to happen. It's going to be on my wall. It's going to be there. So, with that, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, this was an, an extra video uh, we did today. Because I think this is really important to get out and try and cover. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Do like and share this around because I think this is important news that needs to be shared. If there are further updates, I will do a video. I might do one tomorrow when it's there's more been more stuff uh, released about it. We'll, we'll see what happens. But other than that, um, like I say, please do uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, we do videos about Brexit. We do videos about British politics because you can't talk one about the other because it's going to be with us for some time to come. Um... So with that said, uh, other also uh, links below should you like to support the channel uh, with my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. Oh